Today we're doing something I've seen people talk about for years, and it was actually something that was requested by Eli over on our Discord. Which stats are actually better, the Football Manager versions or the FIFA versions? I've taken the statistics from Football Manager and I've put them in FIFA, and today we're going to be comparing them and then playing some games with the two teams. Ever wanted to know which game is the most realistic? Well, we're about to find out. So because it takes so long to create a full team of players on FIFA, I've actually only created 11 players from the Man City side. If you're not aware of how stats work on Football Manager, each player is given a value from 1 to 20, but really the stats work as a 1 to 100 behind the scenes. Each player can grow by 0.2 in each stat, so you'll only be seeing the rounded version in-game. That means I can just take this non-rounded version and put it straight into FIFA. So let's have a look at our players. The first thing you'll probably notice is Erling Haaland's rating. He's rated 91, and look at this foot card I made with his stats. The crazy thing is that FM actually had to downgrade some of his stats because he would score too many goals in that game. On the other hand though, we have Kevin De Bruyne who ends up getting quite a big downgrade. A big part of what makes him highly rated on FIFA is his passing and his dribbling stats. FM doesn't quite rate him as high in these areas, but they do think he's got 10 more pace. I think he'd be a better player to use with the FM stats, but he is lower rated in FIFA. So let's compare the entire team to their FIFA ratings. You can see on the left, this is the Football Manager version, and on the right is the one that's in FIFA. We've already talked about Haaland, so we'll skip straight over him. Phil Foden doesn't really get boosts in many areas, but he gets small ones in important places. His passing goes way up, as does Riyad Mahrez. His dribbling also improves quite a lot. Kyle Walker gets a lot more pace, but he's worse at defending and a little bit less physical, which is probably a bit more accurate to how he is in real life. John Stones goes from being a forgettable FIFA centre-back to being probably one of the best box-to-box -box midfielders in the world, which honestly is kind of realistic to how he's been playing the last few weeks. Ruben Diaz gets a downgrade thanks to his defending stats actually going down. He does get a lot more sprint speed though. Akanji, a big improvement right here. His pace, his physicality and his defending all massively improving. Rodri is another one who doesn't really improve in too many areas, but look at that difference in pace, a 21 improvement on Football Manager. De Bruyne, we talked about him earlier as well, but again, big pace improvement, a big defending improvement, but a downgrade in passing and shooting. And then finally, let's have a look at Edison, where he gets a big kicking improvement, his positioning's a bit worse and his speed is worse too, but overall, he improves as well. Finally, before we play a match between the two sides, let's check out Phil Foden. I actually made two versions of him. The first one we're looking at right now is him as an 88 rated winger. He's already one of the best in the game, but I also made this version of him that I took from an FM save I've got five seasons in. Most importantly, look at these physicals. As an England fan, I really do hope he can get this good at some point in the future. All right, that's enough looking at the players and talking about stats. Let's play some matches and we'll throw all of these players into the Malmo squad because they've got a similar enough kit and see who wins. So as we dive into the matches between the FM and FIFA versions of these players, it is important to know that the outcome of these matches might not only depend on the player statistics. Of course, there are other gameplay factors like team tactics and individual player skill, which can also change the result a little bit. But nevertheless, I think this comparison will actually be quite an interesting perspective on what is important for each game. It's pretty evident straight from kickoff that the FM players have a way better set of physical stats, and they're actually using the default Malmo press, which is a really cool combination. As every FIFA player knows, physical stats are actually super important on FIFA, but they're actually even more important on Football Manager. People have done tests where they run entire seasons where every single player has 20 for one stat and one for everything else and it's always pace and acceleration that end up winning these tournaments. Something about the Football Manager engine really does make your player a lot better when they have high pace. So a lot of these players do have boosts just to make them actually effective in Football Manager. You can see this with Kevin De Bruyne. I don't think in real life he should have that 80 odd pace. I think he really is a low 70s, which is a still a nice amount of pace for an attacking midfielder to have. If we did this comparison the other way around, so we were taking more pace off Kevin De Bruyne but making him better, at everything else, I do think he would actually perform a lot worse on Football Manager than he is doing on FIFA. 
So that's the biggest thing that I noticed while editing these players, a lot of the time I was downgrading physical stats and pace. So while we watch this game, let's talk about if this would actually make the game better. I do remember Football Manager did a collaboration with Pez about 20 years ago now actually, where they did actually go through and change a lot of the player stats to make it a bit more realistic. If they did something like this to FIFA, do I actually think it would make the game better? Or if someone did this as a mod maybe? Well, I do think it probably would, especially with younger players. As a Nottingham Forest fan, I've always been a big fan of Brennan Johnson, even when he was still in the academy. When he was first added to FIFA, he was actually a central attacking midfielder and a central midfielder with just 71 pace. Although he was actually playing right wing for a couple of years, and everyone knows he's been really fast for a long, long time, he's even the fastest player in the Premier League now by sprint speed, he actually only has 89. So they got it wrong at the start, and I still think they're getting it wrong now. So while Sports Interactive and Football Manager do get it wrong quite a lot, it's nowhere near as much as FIFA do, so I do think it would be a massive improvement. Does it make the game more fun though if you do this on FIFA? I'd say it's still pretty much exactly the same game, just the players are represented in more of a fun way. I think the best thing that EA could do is actually add more traits. I've always been a big fan of traits, I think it's a really cool way of making players feel a little bit more individual. Pez has been really good at this over the past years. Their player ID was basically just a combination of 10 or so different traits that made almost every player feel a little bit different. You could have someone like Aaron Lennon on the wing, known for having a really good burst over a couple of meters. He would have a trait that would let him be really good at bursting over a couple of meters, but maybe he couldn't run away from someone like Virgil van Dijk. I would love it if you could comment below which set of stats you think are the most realistic. Try and find some players on FIFA or Football Manager that you think are rated really, really wrongly, and maybe we could do a video where we compare some of those. I think this was a really cool experiment to do. You can probably see that people have different views on how players are rated, and hopefully you enjoyed watching today's video. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed listening to my little rant for the past few minutes while watching some FIFA gameplay, and thanks, cheers, and goodbye.